Hey guys, this is John the Anti-Marketer, just coming to you with a tech tip. Um, I get a lot of people asking me questions about configuring your EverWebinar button. Um, and I've got, a, I've got some training on how you do that uh, on, on my YouTube channel and my blog. Uh, but I'm going to elaborate on it uh, today. So, i shrink my head down here. Uh, I've just got a, uh, I use Thrive Themes, but this, this process will work with, with anything. Uh, and I've just got, got there with Thrive. As you know, I'm a huge fan of Thrive. I think it's the best internet marketing tool or in online business tool on the, uh, in the web right now. But there's a, just a template uh, sign-up page that's uh, just got a normal sign-up and I'm going to replace this button. So uh, the first thing we do, there's the, the Thrive button. Um, I'm going to add some HTML code above the button there. Um, and I've got my um, EverWebinar code there. So I'm going to insert that here um, and hit save. Um, and there's the EverWebinar button. Um, so what I'm going to do is try and mimic this button. Why not? Um, because uh, so that's your standard EverWebinar button. So if I save that now um, and I go do a preview of the page, um, there we go there. There's the Ever Webinar button, boom, and you know you've got all your settings that you do in, in Ever Webinar. Now that works for for lead pages, for click funnels. They all have this HTML code you can stick on the page. So what we want to do then is add our styling to it. And uh, I have covered off on that on the video, but I'm just going to grab my basic style code here, um, and I'll put it in in uh, my blog. Uh, if this is on YouTube, you can click on the blog and get, get this code. Um, and, and somewhere, uh, and I believe I've, I've got a video on this too, you, if for lead pages and um, click funnels, where you can add CSS style code or style, style um, codes to a page. So I'm going to do this in Thrive, um, uh, landing page settings. Um, oops. Let me come back here. This is these are they've just changed a few things here. Come back. Must be ah custom CSS. There is there in Thrive. So every everything has a um, has custom CSS option there. Um, so if I'm going to post this in here, and I'll just uh, I'll make it a really strong red, just so I know that this is that I put the code in the right place. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to hit the big tick up here. Okay, um, and if I close that custom CSS, um, oh, I just changed the border, not the, the central color there. So you can see it's already changed the shape <coughs> anyway. So, um, okay, so now we're going to go into the actual how I change things in the code. Um, so you can see there I've added my custom CSS. Now I want to modify it. So let me just um, get this into its own little thing here. And this is basic style stuff now. So if you're not into coding or, or anything else, um, you, you can do some searches on it. But I'm going to give you a few, few basic elements. So one is how do you make the corners round or square? Uh, the style code is uh, border hyphen radius. Uh, and I, if I just said oh, something big because I want them to be rounded, 25px. Uh, um, and so this is this is exactly what you'd put and you'd make sure you put a semicolon after it. Um, what you saw me change there was the border color to red. But let's, let's just change it. Um, let's just change the background color to red. And the border color, leave it the same. Uh, leave it a different color, just so I can say, so I can make the border wider. So this is how you change the border of the button. Three pixels solid, you can make it dashed. You put a color there. So this is a hex color. If you don't know anything about hex colors, um, sorry. <laughs> you can, but you can find these online where you can choose colors. It'll tell you the hex. Hex. You can even choose the font family. Um, if you if you choose a Google font, I believe it'll just pull pull that in. So. What if I was to take this now, I've made those modifications, I dump it in here into my CSS, overwrite what I've currently put in, and hit save, okay, and then close. See what's happened to my button? Red, 
It's got a thick border. Okay, what if I want it to be totally rounded? Let me go back in there again. Let's make this uh, border radius. Let's make it a bit more. Let's make it 45. See what it'll do. There we go. So it's done that there. So, you know, you can do all sorts of things like that. Now, someone asked me, well, how do I change the text on this? Um, so, uh, actually, I'll come back to that. Sorry, I'll, I'll stick with style code. So just a couple of the style codes that you need to know uh, for your border radius. Um, that's that's one of them, border hyphen radius. There it is there. Um, that's what that's for your border itself. So if I was to put, if I, if I was just mucking around with styling, and say, what's it look like without a border? I'd just put it as 0px. I wouldn't delete the whole line in case I wanted to come back and change it. And that's what it looks like without the border. Um, so you can see it's quite powerful here. You can do anything you want. Um, I can make the font white, weight lighter, 500. Let's have a look here. Let's see if it makes any difference. Uh, I didn't see that it did. I think the next level down from 700 is like the 4, to tell you the truth, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, um, okay, sorry, let me come back here. I've lost this. Okay, um, so you got your border, your padding. That's uh, let's just make the padding something really big so you can see what happens to this. Twenty-four percent. Okay, that's the spacing inside, around inside the button. So um, you can see that, and so you can literally muck around with this without really destroying too much. Um, let's make the padding four percent. Um, um, font size, okay, let's make that. I'm not sure what REM is. You could probably change that to pixel size as well. So I've made that bigger there. There we go. Um, so there's some of the elements. You get the point there. Um, you can use shadowing and everything else. So, okay, so let's come back to the button code now. So I've shown you the style code, how you can change colors and borders and everything else. Um, uh, so now I've got my button code here. I'm going to edit my HTML content because let's just say, well, I've got that big writing, but I want it to go over two lines, so I need to change my button width. And you can do that in the button code. This is what EverWebinar give you here. Um, let's say if I made it 500 PXY, there it is here, the width. Um, there we go. Maybe that's too wide now. Um, uh, and so you can sort of play with that. Um, let me let me style this a bit nicer though. I, I, I tend to sort of oops, I tend to sort of um, do these things in a rush because I, I don't. Want the, I, I'm going to make the padding 8px. That's pixels. Have a look there. There we go. That's a bit nicer. Um, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to make my width 400. Lovely. So that's that's a nice big button. Um, so now what I want to do, uh, someone said, how do you change the wording in there? Uh, quite simply, um, let me just put this in Notepad and I, I just, that will allow us to break up the, the actual code. Um, you will see the wording in here, uh, register now. There it is there. There's the wording register now. Okay. And so just a little bit of... Um, uh, Coding 101, coding basics. Um, uh, that link, that's what that's what's used for the the Ever Webinar stuff to to sort of derive their software bits on there. Um, and wherever you've got a div, it's a div is is something with settings that that specifies width and everything else. Um, this class is derived from. Uh, like you can literally break up this code like this. Then they've got your button code. Um, then they've got span, register more. Then they close the button code. Then they close it. So these are closing ones. So they've all got to match. If you open up a button code, if you open up a div code, you've got to close them off. So this script, th this is stuff that EverWeb and I use. Um, and all of this stuff, the only thing you need to know I'm rambling a bit, sorry, is the width there. Uh, none of this stuff you need to change. And here's how you change your wording to register, register now to anything you want. So if I come back in here um, and I say, okay, I want to change that to uh, 
uh, claim your spot now and go boom. There we go. Um, there it is there. I think, okay. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Make the font a bit smaller because I don't want to make the button bigger. Um, let's make that back to 5.8. Hasn't changed it. Let's go back to 1.7. There we go. There we go. So, hopefully, I haven't confused you too much. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, if you're if you're into code, this you, I'll probably bored you to tears. But um, so you know, what I'll do is then just get rid of that button, and there we go. We've got a nice ever webinar button uh, that works. And so, just to recap, you've got two elements. You've got the code you get from ever webinar, and the two things you can change on that are the width of the button and the actual wording on the button, which is here. Register now. Make sure you don't get rid of anything else. Um, and then in your style code, there's many things you can change. You can change any of these. The background color, the font weight, even the font family, the font size, border radius, padding. Uh, that text gets capitalized. If you don't want it capitalized, uh, you can just remove that. Um, and so, yeah, they're, they're the key elements. And that's how you totally customize your ever webinar button.